Hello, I'm Benjamin Anthony, founder and director of Our Soldiers Speak and co-founder of the Miriam Institute. And it's my pleasure to host Israel Briefing, where we present to you a series of briefings with some of the most prominent individuals engaged in the security and policy development of the State of Israel. In this episode, we feature member of Knesset, Amir Ohana. At the time of this briefing, Amir Ohana sat before a group of 40 delegates from the United States military academies, specifically from West Point Military Academy, the United States Air Force Academy, and Virginia Military Institute. These cadets will all go on to become officers in the United States Armed Forces within the coming two to three years. Member of Knesset Ohana spoke to those cadets about his role as a legislator in the State of Israel and at the conclusion opened up for a series of very candid questions. On JBS, here is another in our series, Israel Briefing. The Israeli society are minorities, whether they are ultra-Orthodox or Arabs or new immigrants, uh, Sephardic Jews, uh, and so on and so forth. So I think that makes us, whether we like it or not, and I personally like that, a more pluralistic, more accepting society, and it has been the case also with LGBTs. We have had openly gays in the military since the 90s. In the US, I think it's a matter of, what, six, seven years now? So uh, uh, why? Why is that? First of all, because we can spare no one. We need every one we can get, being so challenged and so threatened as we are. But second of all, really, because I think, uh, despite what one would think, the Israeli society is really open and pluralistic. And the society is way ahead of the legislators, because we still don't have same-sex marriage like you have in the US. But also in the US, it was not the fruit of legislation. It was the court that provided that. Um, and also it was not a wide consensus. It was a five to four, five to four. So it didn't reflect a coast to coast agreement. Um, so I think, yes, we still have a way to go, but we are in pretty good shape. If you would walk in uh, most cities, you would see uh, gay prides. This is actually the month of the gay pride, um, especially Tel Aviv, of course, in which you would see many, many uh, couples walking with double strollers, uh, such as we did when they were younger. Um, and I think we are in a pretty good spot. In 2013, the University of Mainz from Germany conducted a survey amongst 84 countries worldwide. Where is it best to be LGBT? Social acceptance-wise, legislative-wise. Israel got number seven, which is pretty high up, I would say. Uh, we have a way to go, and I think we are on the right path. I think you, the world is on the right path. There, is still, there are still countries who criminalize homosexuality, but I see less and less of that. And uh, I think that is the way the world goes to. What was the name of that university? The University of Mainz in Germany. Yeah. Other questions, please? Please. Yes. Sir, uh, Cadet Martin from the Virginia Military Institute. I'm originally from Pennsylvania. Uh, my question is, you, uh, you said you uh, had to form a coalition, but the other party did not want to join that coalition. What was the reason why? Hmm. That is the million dollar question. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they say, because they know it would be very popular, they say it is about issues of religion and state, in which there is a wide consensus in Israel that certain changes needs, needs to be made. But the fact is that during the negotiations, the only thing that they insisted was whether in the, how do you say, uh, draft, 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 draft bill, 
whether the uh, numbers would be written in the bill or decided by the government. Which is the nuance about that bill and about the relationship between religion and state entirely. I feel like there is another agenda, there is another motive that we still don't know. I think it's personal issues between the head of that party, Avigdor Lieberman, and our Prime Minister, <coughs> Benjamin Netanyahu. And this stays to be revealed in probably in, during this election campaign. Um, but there is no real reason that I can show or demonstrate why they wouldn't go into the coalition. They have been a member of many coalitions with Benjamin Netanyahu and with the ultra-Orthodox parties, including the last coalition that we had. So there is something else, I suspect. Other questions? Yes, please. Sir, uh, my name is Nick Lewis. I'm an instructor at the United States Military Academy. Uh, my question is, as you mentioned, Israel is a society of minorities. So what do you think carries the future of Israel? The nationalistic pride or your dedication to being both a democratic, or being a religious state as well as a de democratic state? Well, we are not a religious state. We are a Jewish state. But yes. Jewishness has actually two senses. One is the religious one, and the other one is a national, national one. So we are a nation state, that's right. We are not a religious state, by all means. And uh, if you are asking me about the most important issue in Israeli politics, and this is the Israeli-Arab conflict, and where do we go on this issue? Well, this is indeed uh, the, the thing, the one thing that divides left from right. I mean. In the rest of the world, when you would talk about left and right, you would talk about social issues, economy issues. In Israel, you primarily talk about the Israeli-Arab conflict and where do you stand on the defense issues. And we know there is a plan, one of many plans that came to the table before. And I will give you my view, which I believe is probably the views of, I don't know if majority, but many, many Israelis. We want peace. We need peace. If you would take a look at the map and see how tiny the state of Israel. Do we have anyone from uh, Chicago? We don't. I, I visited Chicago just uh, last year, and I was on a nice uh, apartment viewing Michigan Lake. Mm -hmm. Now, you need to realize, I didn't know it at the time, but I was Googling. Michigan Lake is three times larger than the state of Israel, the entire state of Israel. This is Michigan Lake. So we tend to say that Israel is like New Jersey. It's so small. And if you would compare it to the size of the 21 Arab states surrounding it, you would find that it is almost a thousand times smaller. Okay? Many, many times smaller than the size of the Arab countries. We need peace, but in order to achieve peace, we need another side that both wants peace and has the political stability to maintain peace. Unfortunately, we have none. On the one hand, we have Hamas. Hamas, a terror organization totally devoted to the destruction of Israel and the killing of as many Jews as possible. Jews, mind you, not Israelis. In Hamas Covenant, if you would read it in section 7, they yearn to the day where the rocks and the trees, al shajar wal hajjar in Arabic, would shout, Ho Muslim, slave of the Lord, there is a Jew behind me, come and slaughter him. That is Hamas Covenant, that is how anti-Semitic this organization is, but they don't only say it, they demonstrate it by deeds. Some of the most horrific terror attacks that we have known came from Hamas. Well, my colleagues from the left would say, you're right, but that is Hamas. We do have the other ones. We do have the moderate ones that we can work with, the PLO, the Partners for Peace. Well, do we? The PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, was established back at 1964, which is an important fact to remember. Because back at 1964, there was not one settlement, not one Jewish settler, not one Israeli soldier on the lands 
of Judea and Samaria, or what they call the West Bank. So what did they want to liberate Palestine from? Or rather, should we ask, what is Palestine? Is it really Amona and Maale Shomron and Otniel, or is it really Yafo and Akko and Haifa and Tzfat and everything that we consider as the state of Israel? Now, my colleagues from the left would say, yeah, that's right, but that was back in 1964. This is 2008, 19. <laughs> they moved ahead. They are willing to compromise. Why won't you? Have they? When in every pa pa pro-Palestinian demonstration on American universities, on European universities, even on Israeli universities, because we do cherish the freedom of speech, you would hear the same old slogan saying, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free. Now you guys know the map. This is the river, this is the sea, this is the state of Israel. <laughs> Where does it put us? Taking swimming lessons, right? This is not only the slogan in a demonstration, this is the narrative. This is the big plan. This is what the PLO accepted as the 10-point program, which means we cannot take, basically, we cannot take Israel at one step. It's too strong, it's too powerful, we have tried before, it didn't work. We will have to do it step by step. And unfortunately, my government gave them every reason to believe it will be so. First time, 1993, the Israeli government accepted the Oslo Accords, which basically means we will import, literally import, thousands of terrorists headed by Yasser Arafat, who was haunted not only by Israel intelligence, but by many foreign intelligence as a terror organization. And we will bring them guns, supplies, uniforms, training, give them their own territories, saying, you guys want peace? We want peace. You want to rule yourselves? Go ahead. Form your own government, form your own judicial system, parliament, uh, government, whatever. Do it. It exploded to our face. I mean, literally exploded to our face. Not many Israelis remember that, but prior to 1993, there was not one suicide bomber in the state of Israel. By now, we can count them by the hundreds and the victims too. That is what we got when we reached our hand to peace. Now, you might expect, well, the Israelis, they are clever. They probably learned the lesson. And then came 2005 in which the Israeli government once again accepted to end the occupation on Gaza, as Prime Minister back then Ariel Sharon said. And we have evacu evacuated the Gaza Strip out of Israelis. We took the soldiers out, we took the camps out, we took the dead out of their graves because we knew what would happen if we leave them there. We took everything out. Three generations of people living and flourishing the desert. What happened? You know, some expected that Gaza would become the Singapore of the Middle East. They have a beautiful strip by the shore. They will build hotels, invest in education, healthcare, everything that a normal people who wants to live does. Others said, no, we are more skeptical, but at least, maybe not peace, but at least from that region, we'll have quiet because they have no more reason to shoot at us. We are no longer there. Why would they? Why? Because it's not about Gaza. Because it's not about Judea and Samaria. It's not about the West Bank. It's about a Jewish state in any borders. This is why they, what they object to. And we got missiles that would go further and further to kill more and more Israelis in Gaza. We got tunnels underneath our villages. We didn't get peace. So as much as we want and need peace, I'm not very optimistic about the chances to have that in the near future. However, and this is important, if we can build on two major pillars that bridge that will allow us peace in the long term, those two pillars would be one, 
education and the other economy. What do I mean? When I say education, the paying of salaries and bonuses to murderers has to stop. This is what the Palestinian Authority does. And I'm not talking about military heroes. I'm talking about those who slaughtered two months old Hadass Fogel in her bed. Okay? They get salaries and bonuses from the Palestinian Authority. The glorification of murders has to stop. The incitement to terror has to stop. The naming of streets and buildings after terrorists like the government building in Ramallah. The government building in Ramallah, not just a small alley somewhere, is named after Yehya Ayash, aka Al Muhandis in Arabic, the engineer, who is responsible for the killing of more than a hundred Israeli women and children and innocent men. This is who they name the government building after. It has to stop. And when I say economy, you know what I would like to see more? When you would walk into those factories in the industrial zones of Judea and Samaria, the very same factories that those who call themselves peace activists wants to boycott. What you would see there with your own eyes is Jews and Arabs working together having lunch together, sharing family pictures, congratulating each other for a newborn in the family, living together rather than killing each other. And they want to boycott that in the name of peace? This is what we need to see more. This is the future. This is the only future because they are not going away and we are not going away. You know, Golda Meir, our fourth prime minister, and a very wise woman once said that the Israelis has a secret weapon. And five minutes? Okay. And the secret weapon is not a special missile or submarine or air jet. It's the fact that we have nowhere else to go. This is our secret weapon. We don't have 21 <coughs> nation states for one nation. The big Arab nation, al Umma al Arabiya in Arabic, they have 21 nation states with the same language, same culture, same religion. We only have one. And we're going to keep it. And I want to thank you guys. And I want to thank our closest friend, our closest ally, the United States of America, which throughout all the years, regardless of which administration there was in America or in Israel, was always showing the strong friendship, the strong alliance between our two countries that is based on many values that we share, but also of uh, very deep understanding that in this region, and maybe in the world, there is no better friend for the United States or for Israel than each other. And this is something I want you to take home with you when you go back home. Um, we love America. <laughs> yes, do we have time for maybe one, one short last, last question? One last question? Yes, please. So, Jenna Sui from the United States Air Force Academy, uh, just talking about the Palestinian-Israeli conflict. I'm wondering what exactly is the end goal besides just peace, whether that be, you know, integration of the Palestinian Arabs into Israel as one nation state or into two separate states? The status quo is something between the idea of a one state or two state solution. It's a one and a half state solution. <laughs> which means between the river and the sea, everyone gets to vote. Those who live under the sovereignty of the Palestinian Authority and the Palestinian Authority's education system, police system, judicial system, 
vote for the Palestinian parliament. And those who live under the Israeli sovereignty of the education system, judicial system, and whatever, vote for this body, for this Knesset. Now, it's not an ideal solution. It's not something that either side is dreaming of. It is, however, the lesser evil between all of the so-called solutions that I see on the, on the shelf, both from right and from left. So I think there will be a very, uh, a, a very high level of independence for the Palestinian Authority. Uh, but still, uh, it cannot be a sovereign state 100% because of security and defense issues. Because we cannot go through another wave. We will not go through another wave of terror, uh, which, is, which will be the case if that happens. Okay, so the status quo pretty much is what I think the end game should be. But of course, I think if we will be wise enough to have economic cooperations and to have education, uh, maybe exchanges between us, the level of hostility should go down. We would be pleased to send a complimentary DVD of this program to anyone who wishes to support JBS with a tax-deductible gift of $36, double high or more. Simply visit the JBS website at jbstv.org and click on the Donate button to make a donation by PayPal or your credit card. And please, indicate the program for which you would like a DVD. Or you can send your tax-deductible check to JBS, P.O. Box 180, Riverdale Station, Bronx, New York, 10471. And again, please remember to indicate which program you would like to receive with our compliments. And we thank you for your kind support.